friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using a bunch of Lawn Fawn sets, including Mermaid for You, Flamingo Together, Swan Soiree, Ahoy Matey, You Are Sublime, and Life is Good. So I've stamped my images out on Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my mermaid, and for her skin, I'm going to use E00, E11, and E13. She's been hanging out topside with her flamingo friends, so she's got a nice little suntan going on. So I used the E13 as my darkest and laid in some shadows under her hairline, on the bottom of her arms, just a little bit um, in her cleavage and on the sides of her belly. I blended that out with the E11 as my midtone, and then the E00 as my lightest. And then I'm also going to use those same three shades for the island, starting with the E13 down at the bottom, and then blending toward the top with the E11 and using the E00 as my highlight. Moving on to her hair, I'm using E50, E51, E53, and E55. So for hair, I always do start lightest to darkest. So I'm taking that E50 and laying in where I eventually want my darkest colors to go. Starting with the lightest color just really helps you to build that up, especially if it's something that you're not really sure of. I haven't been coloring hair for all that long, so um, starting light and then going darker and darker really helps me um, not make mistakes too much because I can correct it over those lighter shades. So I definitely want some darker areas in the hair that's swept behind her neck. I also want to add a little bit of darkness to the ends so that the midsection there kind of looks bumped out. And I will also add a little bit of darkness to her part so that the area on top of her head also looks bumped out. So I'm just building up my colors all the way now to the E55. And now I can kind of see that the part needs some of that darkness on both sides for it to kind of make sense. So I can correct that now um, with that E53. And then I went back and added a little bit more of that E55 so that it's the same tone. And then I'll just continue blending back down towards my lightest shade. So I'm using the E51 now and really eating into that white space, just leaving a little bit left for that E50. So once I get all done and everything is nice and blended, I actually want to go back and add a few little streaks to tie it all together. So I'm starting with the E53 and using the very tip of my marker so I can get nice thin strokes. Um, this is, I believe, the marker that I just swapped nibs on my Copic refill video um, so that I could have a really nice fine point again. And then once I have that all laid in with the E53, I also want to do a few with the E55 just to deepen up those low lights. And um, once I have that all nice and laid in, I'll actually go back over it one more time with my lightest shade, the E50. I wouldn't always do that, but because she's a little bit more cartoony and less realistic, I just want there to be a little less definition so it kind of matches the style of the image. I took away my E50 and E51 and kept the E53 and E55, added in the E57 and E59, and I'm going to use the lightest three shades there to color the trunks of my palm trees. So I'm starting with the E57 on the right hand side and blending toward the left with the E55 and then using the E53 as the highlight. And then for the coconuts, I'll use the darkest three shades. So I'm doing a little backward C shape with the E59 and then blending toward the top left with the E57 and then a little bit of the E55 as well. For the rocks, I'm using E70, E71, E74 and E77, starting with the E77 and just creating a little bit of definition and variation in the rock formations. And then I'm going to begin to blend out with the E74. 
And as with wood, I'm not going to be perfectly smooth because this is rock and so it has a lot of mix of colors in there and it's not perfectly smooth either. So I'm just going to kind of leave a little bit of a rougher transition from shade to shade. Um, so now I'm using that E71 and just saving a few little places for that E70. And then I'll do the second rock exactly the same off screen just to save some time in the video. For the mermaid's tail, I'm going to use a hot pink combo. It's RV13, RV14, and RV17. So I'm laying in the shadow on her left side with that RV17, and also adding a little bit of shadow to the bottom edge of her tail, and then blending out with the RV14, and then the RV13. The RV13 pushes back the RV14 quite a bit, so I did go back and add a bit more of that and blended it out once again. I'm also going to use those shades for the flamingo. So I'm going to come in on the bottom of his wing with the RV17, or maybe her wing, I guess. I think this is the female flamingo from the set because she's got that little bit of uh, eyelashes. So I defined the edges with the RV17 and now I'm blending out with the RV14 and just making sure to really blend out the edge of that RV17 so I do get a smooth transition since she has feathers, she would be nice and smooth. And then I'll come in with the RV13 to fill in all of the white space. And just like with the mermaid's tail, that RV13 is going to push a little bit of the RV14 out of the way. So I will come back in a few little areas and just um, smooth out that transition and then go back to the RV13 once again. I'm going to keep the RV13 and add in the RV10 and RV11 to do the baby flamingo's beak. And I did do a double layer on that. I actually did a double layer on all of my images today, as I usually do. I just cut it out of the video because it was so lengthy already. Um, and then I also used the RV11 and RV13 to color in the flowers in the flower crown. I'm also going to use the RV11 to add a little bit of pink tone to the Mama Flamingo's beak. And then I'll use the RV00 and RV02 for the baby flamingo's body. I did Google baby flamingos and some of them were kind of gray toned and some of them had the tiniest bit of pink and I definitely thought the pink was more fun. So that's what I chose to do. I'm moving on to the Little Mermaid's bikini top and for that I'm using YR04, YR07, and YR09 just adding a little bit of definition to the edges and also to the center with the YR09 and then blend it out with the YR07 and then the YR04. I'm also going to color in two of my little starfish with these three shades and then I'll use C7 to add the black tip to the Mama Flamingo's beak and I'll use the RV10 to add some rosy cheeks to my mermaid. I'll color the other starfish with Y13, Y15, and Y17. And then I will use the Y13 and Y15 to do the centers of the flowers in the flower crown. For the little vines, I'm going to use YG21, YG23, and YG25. I started by adding a little YG23 toward the base and then blend it out with the YG21 at the tips. And then I went back and added just a quick little flick with the YG25 to deepen that up. And again, I'll do the other two off screen just to save some time. I'll use G24 and G28 for the little grasses. Just adding a little G28 in the uh, way that they're bending and then using G24 where they would be in the light. And then I'll use that same combination for my palm trees, but also add in the G20 for a nice highlight. And especially since they are going to be really close to the sun, 
um, in the final scene of the card. So I really wanted that nice highlight to show uh, that reflective light of the sunset. So all that's left is the little conch shell. So I'm going to outline that with E00 and add a little pink to the inside with the RV10. And then I wanted to add some different little uh, spots on the outside of the shell. So for that, I'm using E55 and E53. I'm kind of just laying them in first with that E55, wherever I want them to be. And then I will soften up the edges of that with the E53. And then I will trim these images out with their coordinating dies. For my background, I took a small circle stackable from Lawn Fawn and die cut that out of some masking paper. I'll peel off the backer sheet and stick that towards the top center of the Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock panel. And once I have that smoothed into place, I'm also going to take some post-it tape and tape off a horizon line. I'm going to start with some Squeeze Lemonade Distress Oxide ink and blend in a circle right around that die cut to create a glow around the sun. Then I'm going to peel up the uh, post-it tape and also add a glow on the bottom half. I just wanted it to be less intense, which is why I masked it off first. And then I'm going to pull that down in kind of a triangle and then put the tape back to cover up the horizon line. Next, I'll bring in Picked Raspberry. And because this color is pretty intense, I'm going to start at the corners and sides of the top of the panel and blend that towards the yellow, kind of letting it get softer as the colors intermingle. And once I have that all laid in how I want it, I will go back to my Squeeze Lemonade and blend the transition until I'm happy with it. I did go back two or three times until I had a look I was happy with. And then I brought in the Dusty Concord, and this one is really dark as well. And I only wanted just the tiniest bit on the outside edges to deepen those up. So I'm being very, very soft with my pressure and being very careful to just stick to those edges. And then I can peel off the horizon line and move that tape up to cover the top half so I can work on the bottom. The tape didn't really want to stick to the wet cardstock, so I did wrap it around to the back just to hold it better in place. So for the bottom, I'm going to start with tumbled glass and I'm going to come in from either side because I don't want to completely cover up that yellow uh, light that's being cast by the sun. I do want to cover some of it because it's supposed to look like it's on the surface of the water. So I do want some of that blue to eat into that yellow space, but I don't want to lose it completely. So I'm trying to be soft as I get towards that yellow area. And I came almost all the way down the panel. Next, I'm coming in with peacock feathers. And again, because it's a nice bold color, I'm going to come from the outsides toward the tumbled glass and then go back with my tumbled glass dauber and blend the transition between the two. And just like with up above, I did go back and forth two or three times until I had a look I liked. And then I grabbed my ink blending tool with the squeeze lemonade still on it and went back over the blue colors that I had just put on to kind of help that stand out on top once again. And then finally, I'm taking Mermaid Lagoon down at the bottom edges, just like I did at the top with the Dusty Concord. I wanted to deepen up the sides and the bottom corners. So I'm just using that very lightly around the outside edges. Once I'm satisfied with the blend, I will peel off the post-it tape and also the mask in the center. But the sun is a little too bright, so once again I'm going to go back to my Squeeze Lemonade and I'm going to especially blend over the bottom half with the yellow because I want it to look like 
it's sinking behind the horizon and not, you know, kind of disappearing into the water. So I even put that tape back there more momentarily. And I also did blend just a tiny bit of yellow into the top half. I used the ocean wave accents to die cut some waves into the sea. And now I am stamping my sentiment by popping that into my Misty. I'm using a VersaFine Onyx Black ink so that it stands out against that Distress Oxide. And I stamped Waving Hello along with a Seagull Silhouette. Then I'm popping my card base in my Misty. I'm using Mermaid cardstock and I'm stamping in Peacock ink, the sentiment that says, See you soon. And now I am finally ready to begin adhering my images. So I'm going to start with the island and I added a little bit of glue from the glue tube to the back of that and I'm tucking that into the largest wave that's right toward the bottom of the sun. And then on top of that, I'm going to add the palm trees and I'm going to put those a little bit over to the left side. Next, I'm going to take one of the large rocks and I'm going to tuck it into uh, one of the waves on the right hand side. And then the other one is going to go in the wave on the left that's just a little bit lower than that. So the three of those land masses are kind of creating a visual triangle on the card. So on the rock on the right hand side, I'm going to add the flamingo mama so she's going to be standing up there um, just perched kind of talking to her little mermaid friend and i'm going to overlap the edge of that island to kind of push it back in the scene which is going to make the scale of those small palm trees fit even more because they look like they're in the distance i'll also tuck one of the little vine grasses behind that a rock and then add a starfish in front and then I have a little bit of the sea grasses and I'm going to tuck that down in front as well over on the left. Then I'll grab my mermaid and I'm going to have her perched on the rock on the left so that the two of them can be conversing. I'll take another one of those vines or kelp or seaweed, whatever they are growing out of the ocean floor and I'll tuck that behind her rock and a little bit behind her hair as well to push that back even farther. And I'll add one of the grasses behind her um, just to make it look a little bit different from the other rock. I just wanted the little um, grouping to be slightly different while using the same elements. I'll add the other two starfish to her rock. I'm going to put the orange one farthest away from her just to spread those pops of orange around the card. And then I'll also tuck another one of the sea grasses down in front. And I grabbed my tonic pokey stick to kind of maneuver those starfish and get them into the place that I wanted them. And then I'm going to take the other sea vine whatever that is and tuck that one back behind the flamingo again just so that the different outcroppings look a little bit varied and again i had to use my little pokey tool to kind of maneuver that piece since it was tucked behind multiple other elements i'll add the flower crown to the mermaid's head and then grab the baby flamingo and I'm going to tuck that into the waves right below the mermaid's rock. So I'm just going to open that up and put him down in there. And then it did make me want to move those grasses just a little bit so that the baby flamingo wouldn't be covering them up quite so much. And then all that's left is to take the conch shell and add that to the mermaid's hand. So I guess they can be listening to the sound of the ocean while they are at the ocean. I added some foam tape to the back of that focal panel and I'm going to line it up carefully on the card front. And once I'm sure that I have all the edges nice and straight, I will pop that down into place. 
And of course you can't have a mermaid card without some glitter. So I added some here and there and I was not shy about it. I put it on her tail and also to all three of the starfish. I added it to the centers of the flowers on her crown and to the conch shell. Um, I also ended up adding some to the coconuts in the palm tree because I wanted some pops of glitter on the top half of the card as well. And I dotted some onto the island so you could have some sparkly sand back there. I'm going to also add it to the beaks and wings of both the mama and baby flamingo. And I even ended up adding a little bit to the sun so it could be kind of glistening there on the horizon. So this card is actually featured on the Lawn Fawn blog today. So I will have a link to that post down below if you'd like to check that out. I'll also have all of the products used listed and linked below the video as I always do. And that is going to complete my card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. You can ring that notification bell if you want to be sure my videos always end up in your feed. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.